I keep getting asked by people about the books I recommend. So I thought I'd do this little video on the books that I believe helped me become the man I am. My father told me a long time ago, everything you want to know, son, is in a book, except how to be yourself. You've got to write that book. So here's a little short video on all the books that have helped me find out who I am and become that man. One of the best compliments I get when I do public lectures or meet people, even in a social setting, they say to me after they get to know me quietly, God, you're so fucking real. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's one of the secrets. Be real. Be yourself. If they like you, you'll know it. If they don't like you, you'll know it. The books that helped me the most, the first one is When I Say No, I Feel Guilty by Manuel Smith. That's a book on how to be assertive. How to stop people from manipulating you. It doesn't get you what you want always, but it prevents people from manipulating you out of into whatever they want you to do or out of whatever you want to do. Okay? Get that book. It's easy, simple follow. Well, it's written for PhD, so there's a lot of gibberish in there you don't need to pay any attention to about the methods and all that crap. But learn the skills. Broken record, fogging, negative inquiry. Learn the skills and then practice on people who can't fire you or fire you from a relationship. Don't start with your girlfriend and don't start with your parents and don't start with your boss. Start with service people like uh, people that work in the supermarket or people at the gas station or waitresses or snotty maitre d's, whatever you want. Learn how to assert yourself and prevent manipulation. The next most important book I would say helped me become who I am is Between Parent and Child by Haim Ganot. This is a book that doesn't seem like it should help you, but it does because it teaches you how to acknowledge other people's feelings and perceptions and opinions without pissing them off. Straightforward methods to be empathetic and communicate what you want and what is not acceptable. This is great for dealing with women because they usually are operating on emotion like children and they're not logical. When you try to be logical with a woman, you're not gonna get very far. So get the book, Between Parent and Child, read it. Now here's a warning. Most men have a very difficult time, even women have a difficult time finishing this book. It's a very small book about that big. And the reason that is, is they find a hundred reasons why to stop reading it and put it down and then never get back to it. What's happening is the information in there about how to talk to children reminds them so deeply of how bad they were treated as a child. And it's starting to surface, starting to come up here where they can feel it and see it, but they don't know what it is yet. They just know they feel uneasy. So they put the book down and go do something else. I'm telling you to power through it, get all the way through it and understand it, but don't buy the new improved version. Get the original one. The, co the cover is the one will be in the video. Some bastard took advantage of poor Mrs. Gannott and told her he was going to make it better, and he ruined the fucking book. How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown. He explains that uh, other people are the prison we're in. If you're not free now, it might be because you've been preoccupied with people or institutions that have restrained your freedom. I don't expect you to stop worrying about them merely because I tell you to. I do hope to show you that people and institutions are relatively powerless to stop you once you decide how you achieve your freedom. I can remember the thing most important to me in there was, uh, he said, friends are about drinking beer and talking and sharing stories. It's not about helping somebody move. Okay. In Southern California, when I first got here, I was the same age. All my friends were, of course, within plus or minus 10 years. In Southern California, everybody was moving all the time. Every weekend was people getting together and helping somebody move. And I said, fuck that shit. Once I read the book, I said, no, I'm not getting anything out of this. I get tired. That's what I get. So he helps you understand what friendship is, what allegiances are, and what you actually owe other people on a fair basis. Friendship is not helping move, paint a room, do the wash. It's about doing the things you like to do together. The next most important book was How to Be Your Own Best Friend. Now, this book is about that big. 
You know, it was originally, I got it, the original in a mimeograph. Do you remember what mimeographs were? Oh my God. <laughs> I got a mimeograph version of that book when I was an intern for Brandon in therapy. And all the interns had to read it and give a short report on how it changed their life. And boy, it sure changed mine. Basically, what it does is tell you to stop talking shit to yourself. Be your own best friend. Talk to yourself in your head the way you would talk to your best friend. You wouldn't say, Jesus, what a dumb shit. You forgot it again. You wouldn't say that to your best friend. But I did say that to myself yesterday. I heard myself saying it. <laughs> forgot my fucking mask to go down to the goddamn store. And I caught myself. That's the good thing about it. Once you're aware that you give yourself shit and that's not helpful, you'll stop doing it. Or when you do it, you'll know you did it. And it won't have nearly the damage it does if you keep giving yourself shit. Be your own best friend. Be nice to yourself. Go to bed when you're tired. Get up when you want to. Like that. Be your own best friend. You wouldn't tell your friend when to go to bed just because it's 9 o'clock. He doesn't want to go to bed. He doesn't want to go to bed. Fuck it. Don't do that. And here's a book that helped me a lot when I been recently divorced and I had a three-year-old daughter. The Boys and Girls Book About Divorce. I don't know how many guys are married with children, but it's very important that you make sure the child understands what's going on and that you, you love them no matter whether they're getting divorced or you're not getting divorced. Mommy and I don't get along together. You know, like you and Debbie fight at school. We're having a little fight right now. And Dad's going to live in another place, and so we stop fighting. Uh -huh. I'll be here when I tell you I'm going to be here. And then you have to be there when you say you're going to be there, you have to deliver. You can't call and make excuses. If you say you're going to be there, you have to be there. You have to keep your promises. And when you fuck up, you have to tell her you fucked up. And apologize. As soon as you realize you fucked up, like I used to be short with my daughter. God damn it, Cindy. And I said, whoops, sorry. I know better than that. I meant, please. I've asked you not to do that in the house. Take the ball outside and bounce it outside. That's how you learn to be your own best friend by being best friends with other people and being the best friend to your child. Boys and girls book about divorce. Get it if you have a child and you're getting divorced. Here's an unusual book that really changed my life. Jonathan Livingston Seagull. It's a little story, an allegory about I'll read, I'll read what he says. The universe is on the side of the bold, the adventurous, and the free in spirit. I was laying on the beach on April 14th, 1972, with Barbara Johnson. She was uh, 18 at the time, and I was 33 at the time. And I just was in this really shitty marriage, and... We had made love the night before and gone out for breakfast, and we were laying on the beach. And I rolled over, and I put my arm around her, and I said, I feel like Jonathan Livingston White. <laughs> and she knew what I meant, because she read the book. Get the book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, Be Born Again in a New, in a new Way. The Naked Ape by Desmond Morris got me on the track of understanding that people are animals. And we are the product of evolution. All of our uh, knowledge and skills of uh, getting along in a group, being afraid of strangers, learning to share, learning to cooperate, learning what uh, free will and judgment is, is all part of being an animal. And uh, he calls us naked apes because we are so closely related to the apes, we branched off from them about six million years ago. And the only difference between us and most apes is we don't have any hair. Okay. The Naked Ape. I think you'll enjoy it. It's well written. It's for a popular audience. It's not full of a bunch of technical gibberish. These two books help me in, in understand business. Parkinson's Law. Okay. <laughs> it was recommended to me by Ed Mayer, the man I dedicated office politics to. Work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Our job, Ed, Ed and I, were putting proposals together for Bechtel. Proposals and offer to do business and has a drop dead date. It has to be there by a certain date or you're not considered. And we had to get information from engineers and technicians and construction people and estimators and 
every different kind of discipline Bechtel had, work expanse to fill the time allotted. The more time they have, the more time they would take. So I learned early on, maybe in about my second year at Bechtel, to create a deadline that would give me time to read the damn thing, edit it, put it together, and fix the things that were wrong. What we used to do is throw it together to last minute, send it out, and it was full of mistakes, not typos or anything, but mistakes where the engineer didn't say it clearly enough, and the customer calls up and we'd have to go over there for a fucking meeting. And that makes you look bad. So my job was to make sure everything, I understood everything, and I'm not a fucking engineer, I'm just a tech writer. I'm smart as a fuck, but I'm not an engineer. So I say, what does that really mean? I said, I'm in eighth grade, explain it to me like I'm in eighth grade. And they would explain it to me in eighth grade. And I would fix the sentence or the paragraph. And I would give it back to them. I say, is that what you said? Yes. But they won't do that if there's not a deadline. And they have to know the deadline is dead. My boss will kick your ass. And if he doesn't do it, the division manager will kick your ass. So the deadline, I always scrunched it up so they had to get it in on time. Parkinson's Law. Work will expand to fill the time allotted. So you've got to shorten the time. Peter Principle, you rise to your level of incompetence and then you don't get any higher and the company keeps you there. That's why so many incompetents are in charge. They keep promoting you until you can't do it. And they can't lay you off or fire you because the law says you can't do that. So all the incompetents run the company, okay? And you have to work around them, just like the army. The sergeants I had didn't know jack shit about what we did. We transmitted mega secret NATO cryptos stuff it was so secret officers weren't allowed in our radio band and they're telling us how to do it so mostly sergeants that we that i met were just in deadbeat deadwood in the army waiting for retirement so that's what happens you rise your level of incompetence he's a three-stripe sergeant he's not going to be a four-stripe sergeant because he can't fucking do this job of three stripes another book that helped me a lot <laughs> in office politics, up the organization. This book is still around 30 years later because it's so perfect. One of his rules is when you take over a company, fire the whole fucking personnel department. They're called HR now. They don't do anything. They're useless. Make the people who are going to use the person, hire them. Make them, find them, and hire them. The uh, HR personnel people basically fill out forms to keep the government happy to prove you're not discriminating and you're not laying off old people and all that bullshit. But the next thing you do is you go to every manager in the company and ask them, what would you like to do different in your in your organization? And listen to them and make sense. Do it his way. Don't do it your way. Do it his way because he has to do it. Great book. I got to be in charge at Beckel after a couple of years because they knew I could do the job. My rules were I get to hire and fire. No questions asked, period. I don't care if they've been here 30 fucking years. If he can't do it, I don't want him around here. You can send him to the construction site or something, but he can't work for me because he gets in the way and he slows everything down. There are other people that don't show up when they have to. He can't work for me either. Proposals have a deadline. You have to be here on Saturday and Sunday when we're working overtime. You can't have any fucking excuses. If you can't cut it, get the fuck out. I took 29 people down to nine. <laughs> nine people. We got the job done with nine people. Before they had 29, they gave me 10% of the first year's savings. Peter Principle. Six pillars of self-esteem. Incomprehensible. He likes to use big, complicated words and long sentences because he thinks he's brilliant. And he wants everybody to know how fucking brilliant it is. He, he manages to make it incomprehensible to anybody. But there's a saving grace. In the back of the book, there are exercises you can do to improve your self-esteem based on his concepts of the six pillars, what it takes. So get the two CD, two, not the four CD version of the audio book and listen to it. The uh, woman who rewrote the entire book left out all 50 cent words and it's very understandable what he was talking about. So get the two CD version of Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. Here's a book that really did change me. Why I'm Afraid to Tell You Who I Am. Maturity is reached by communicating and interacting with others. And remember what I said about being real? That's what this book is all about. 
What are the consequences if no, no one ever finds out who you really are? He explains how you play games to protect your inner self. And he gives you the courage to be real. So I highly recommend it. Winning through intimidation. This is a big fucking deal. This one helped a lot. It's not what you say or do that counts, but what your posture is when you say or do it. Learn to walk away. That's the right attitude. And I got it from Robert Ringer. Walk away. That's the only thing that gives you power. When you say no, you have all the power. And Helen Fisher. The first book of hers I read is called The Anatomy of Love. Then I read uh, Why Him, Why Her. And the most recent one I read was Why We Love. The Nature and Chemistry of Romantic Love. Excellent. It makes love understandable. Uh, in all her books, she keeps saying, how to make love last. And she hasn't been able to make love last, and neither have I. But she does explain where it goes after nine and a half weeks, and then after four years where it goes. Most divorces in the world happen after four years. And there are legal divorces, not legal marriages. These are primitives all over the world. Four years is a cycle, and it, it corresponds with exactly the cycle of the most divorces in all Western civilization. The most, the most divorces happen between three and five years. It's a big bell-shaped curve. There's others that go on and others that get ended faster. But the great mass of divorces happen between three and five years, which corresponds to the fact that women can only have four babies in their lifetime. So after they have one baby, and the man starts wandering around and fucking his secretary, the marriage is over. But that's normal out on the savannah of Africa. After the first child could take care of himself, the man wandered off and got a new girlfriend and she got a new man because evolution wants her to have four babies from four different men in case one of the men has fucked up genes. Her DNA is not going to get into the future if she bets all on the same guy if he has a problem. So she spreads her seeds around. And your job is to spread your seeds around and make sure one of your kids lives. <laughs> now let's have another book that'll, that'll chill your shit, most of you. The Myth of Monogamy. This will make you get over your guilt feelings. Monogamy may, may be the rule. It's not the practice, not even among animals. They use DNA fingerprinting to find out from courtrooms all over the world how faithful wives were. They weren't very faithful. I gave you the statistics the other day that in America, 7 to 25 percent of babies born in hospitals where they check the DNA are not the child of the husband. They are the child of somebody else. Okay. That's the way it works in the real world, too. Cads or dads. Those are two kind of men. And she wants a cad to be the father. And she wants you to pay for the baby. Sorry. She's just following evolution. And here's another book that just helped me a lot, The Natural History of Love by Morton Hunt. He took, he started way back as far as he could find evidence for the history of love, and he followed it all the way up to the present day. All the iterations has gone through, how all the marriages, all the marriages of types have come and gone. And it's very good just to understand that marriage is not what you've been told. It's entirely different than that. It's an economic arrangement. I wrote it the best in office politics under, in the back of the book called, uh, Children now, later, or never. 